What's going on guys, Pastor Frederick here back with another video. In this one, I'm going to be reacting to a person claiming that they visited the Garden of Eden. Now this video was suggested to me by one of my recent subscribers, Janice Smith, shout out to you. Um, and this video is from a channel called Deep Believer. The host is Jennifer Bagnashi. Now she, to me, comes off like Sid Roth. She has a lot of people on her channel that give testimonies of claiming they went to heaven, hell, this person, the Garden of Eden. So I'm going to react to this video and I'm going to tell you why I think these videos are, we, we should be suspicious and test the spirits in these videos. And I'm going to tell you why I believe this stuff is problematic. So let's just get right to this clip of her talking about when she visited the Garden of Eden. Let me give you my thoughts on that. In my body, because I could feel like where I was, I was sitting on the couch and my body was just vibrating. And then all of a sudden, I was taken into the Garden of Eden. It was like I just knew it was the Garden of Eden. I, was, I just knew. And there was a tree, and he pulled a piece of fruit off the tree. And and I remember the colors, the, it was, it was so beautiful. I just knew. I just knew it was happening. And the, the, even the tree itself looked beautiful. And he pulled it off the tree and he he pulled it off and he looked at me and he said, Anne, just as my sons and daughters have fallen away from me because of this fruit, you will help bring them back. I want to say, but I, I want to be super humble. I want to say he said, you will bring them back here. Like you're going to bring them back here to the Garden of Eden. When you hear stuff like that, and listening to her speak on this on this test on this vision she had she said that jesus took some fruit off the tree gave it to her and said this is what made man fall you're gonna bring them back not to me <laughs> you're gonna bring them back to the garden of eden now how do we we can hear that we listen to that in the sounds poetic it may sound compelling but how do we know if she's telling the truth the only way to know if a person is telling the truth is to compare it against what the word of god says does the word of god tell christians that we're going to be the ones responsible for bringing people back to the garden of eden what does the bible say first and foremost about the fall and who is the one that brings man back, restores man back to a, let's just say a, a place of right standing with God. Well, let's go to the Bible, the scriptures, and read what it says. In Romans chapter 5, beginning of verse 18, it says, Therefore, as one trespass led to condemnation for all men, so one act of righteousness leads to justification in life for all men. For as by the one man's disobedience, the many were made sinners. So by the one man's obedience, the many will be made righteous. This is talking about Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the only one who can bring man back to a place of right standing, a place of righteousness, a place of being justified in the sight of God, not any person. It was Jesus who initially made the payment, paid our sins on the cross, was raised from the dead, sits at the right hand of God, and it's our responsibility as Christians to, is to preach the gospel. That's it. We don't bring people back to Eden. Eden, come on now, Eden is where the fall of humanity took place. And it was Satan who deceived Eve in the Garden of Eden. I don't know about that. We need to test the spirits. So let's continue watching, see what else she has to say. And, and all of a sudden then, we were on a beach, all of a sudden just flashed. And we were on a beach and there was ocean in front of us. And we were in heaven. And I remember I, I said, how am I gonna do that? How am I gonna do that? I don't know one scripture verse. Like I didn't know any, I don't think I had one scripture verse memorized at all. I, I remember saying that to Jesus, like, I don't know how that's gonna happen. I don't know any scripture. Because in my religious mindset, 
I was thinking I had to know the Bible back to front so I could maybe preach people back in the Eden. I don't know. I, I couldn't even comprehend it at the time, but I remember telling Jesus that. And all of a sudden, what was like um, air duct, that's all I can really say. It was like an air duct system, like square, that came dropping out of above me. It just came back, boom, 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 like these, these sounds, like it just unfolded and unfolded and unfolded, like over, over me. And all of a sudden it felt like this portal of like download of revelation was flowing into me. And I felt like my body was vibrating. I felt like my cells were vibrating and I was like on fire. Like what is going on right now? I guess God, you're giving me everything that I need. And I think he said something like that. Well, this is you're receiving everything that you need right now. And then that was it. She admitted that she didn't know the word of God. She didn't know the scriptures. And that is the problem. People who are seeking this experience with God coincidentally are the same people that don't know the word of God. They don't have the word of God inside of them. They don't believe the word of God is enough. So they need these fantastical experiences that nobody can verify. They, they cannot be objectively tested. That's why God tells us to test the spirits because there are false prophets and teachers saying these types of things and people are falling victim and following these people into destruction because these people are not leading one to truth. And that's not the way that God wants us to conduct ourselves as Christians. We must stand on the word of God. The word of God is sufficient. Even Peter says, if anyone asks you a reason for your faith, that you have to give a defense and apologia, give a defense, give an answer for your faith. But the first thing he says before that happens, you must honor Christ in your heart. Christ is the word, the logos. You must have the logos in your heart. Logos is where we get the word logic from. So you must have logic in your heart. You must have the logos, the word Christ in your heart, not anything else, not your own views and opinions. You, you cannot think that they will circumvent the sufficiency of the word of God. Second Timothy 3, 16 says, all scripture is theanustas, breathed out by God and here it is profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. Now, here's the thing that's problematic about this stuff. If you're getting a vision, if you're hearing someone tell you a vision, and it doesn't line up with God's word, that vision is not from God, because God does not contradict himself. But Satan definitely contradicts God's word, because he is a manipulator and he masquerades himself like an angel of light so you may think this is a vision because it's giving you hope and your in your opinion revelation downloaded into your mind but what if that information is just lies to steer you off track to pull you away from god to pull you into new age to pull you into gnosticism to pull you into asceticism to pull you into other religious ideas and philosophies if you're not standing on the word of god you're not going to be equipped for the work of the ministry model yourself like the berean jews who even when paul preached to them they went back studied the scriptures compared paul's preaching to the word of god that's how they verified paul was a true apostle and teacher as paul agreed with the word of god if you enjoyed this video and you want more content like this, do me a favor and subscribe to this channel. Like this video. I'll be back next week with another one. This is Pastor Frederick. This is about a book. Peace.